Hey guys, it's John from thenetguy.com and I'm here with the Netgear GS724T network switch series. So this switch can handle 24 gigabit ethernet connections. Whether you're using it in your home or office, it's an excellent choice. They're available on eBay for about $50. Now, this one happens to have a problem. When I plug it in, you're gonna hear that the fan is incredibly noisy, but I'm gonna show you how you can refurbish this and replace that fan for about $6. Stick around and you'll find out how. So I really like these network switches. Their durable metal construction makes them very reliable. They don't have a simple wall wart. They actually take a regular power cable, 120 volts, and then they have an internal power supply. So you're not dealing with stuff that gets knocked out of the wall easily or a cheap item that maybe shorts out or quits working. This one needs a repair. It needs a fan. So I'm going to play what that fan sounds like when I plug it in. You're going to get to hear the unedited audio of the fan. Sounds like a jet taking off. So this can be annoying if you're going to have this in a living area or you're going to have it in an area where people are going to be seeing it. So it's very, very easy to replace. I'm going to unplug it now. There's two types of fans that you can replace with. This is a 40 millimeter by 20 fan. That means it's 40 millimeters in diameter um, and it's 20 millimeters deep. You could also replace it with a smaller fan if you're in an area where this isn't gonna get really warm and it doesn't need a lot of active cooling. You can replace it with a 40 millimeter by 10 fan. Both of those fans are available on eBay for around $5. You're going to need a screwdriver to replace the fan with, and we may need to splice in the power cable, so you may need a couple electrical crimp connectors. Start by removing the two side screws on the side. And then we're gonna remove the side screw from the front bezel. The front bezel on this does need to come off the way that this connects so that you can access the insides. We're gonna flip it over and do the same thing to the other side. Removing the two side screws. And the front bezel screw. There's two more screws that need to come out on the bottom here. Okay, now all the accessible screws are removed. You're gonna be able to flip this thing over and take the front panel off and then take the top cover off. Be real careful because it can fall apart on you right now because it is undone. So again, I'm gonna remove the front panel as you can see, I'm gonna set it down here. And then sliding forward, I can remove the top cabinet. Be really careful while you're working in here not to touch the items on the right side here. This is the power supply and it can still be energized even though it's unplugged. I'm gonna move the camera so you can get a better look at what I'm doing and then we'll get back to work. And I'm gonna show you how to remove this right here and remove the other screw. And you can then remove this three pin fan header. Now, if you have a three wire header like this, in this case, the person's got the two on one end, that matches up very close to this other fan that we could match into the same location.
So you can hear how that fan sounds. Puts out plenty of air. And here is the replacement and what it sounds like. You can almost not hear it nearly silent. So we're gonna have to do some work here. This connector is different. It has more wires than, or different wires I should say, than the other one. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it back here and I'm going to splice in the connector that's a locking connector from this one. So I'm gonna unplug the device. I'm gonna go get the pair of cutters and some splices and we will continue on this video. Okay. I've got a couple tools that I've brought with me, a pair of nippers so I can cut the wires that are there, a pair of crimpers so that I can crimp on these two crimp connectors. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut ourselves enough room here from these wires to make it usable. And we can throw this old fan out. This thing's seen better days. The new one we're just going to need to remember that red is 12 volt and the other one and on the new fan I'm going to clip off the connector there's plenty of excess wire here, so I'm going to clip it a little bit shorter so we don't have so much extra wire in the case. And I'm going to leave this other wire out, and I'm going to strip the top of both of these. So those wires are exposed. And then this one goes black and yellow when I connect it here. In this case, black will be on that side towards me, and the yellow will be the power that's on the side towards you. So I can connect the black wires together. And you can use a barrel or butt slice connector. I like these ones. You put them in and simply crimp down and that's connected. The other two put the cap on and crimp down. So the nice thing about these is these are insulated connectors so we're not going to have to worry about things getting electrocuted here when they run into each other and these excess wires do not touch anything so I am just going to tuck them out of the way and we're going to connect this onto the board with the locking tab connector that it has and it locks and then I'm going to put the fan in like so. Now sometimes the fans that you get will have larger screw holes and they won't be able to thread like these ones. Since this is not going to be under any stress or movement, I am going to just simply zip tie it through the bottom. And pull it tight. There we go. Now we can plug it in to test. That's very, very quiet. Okay, and assembly is the reverse of disassembly, so we're going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to take the top. I'm going to engage it like so and slide it back. And then I'm going to take the front panel and anchor it like so. 
making sure that all of the items slide in cleanly. And we're going to join the front panel back on like so. And we're going to add the screws back in to the front panel and the sides. There's a few things I really like about the GS724T from Netgear. One, it's got 24 available gigabit ethernet ports, status indicators for all of the ports, and additionally, two additional uplink SFP ports that you can use to interconnect switches and other advanced devices. It's wall or rack mountable, which is really convenient. And if you plug it in, you can tell this one is much quieter now. It still has a fan design, but it doesn't have to be obnoxiously loud. I really like the price point. At around $50, these things are a steal. You can have a much more advanced network switch and a much more business grade, heavy duty switch than you could afford otherwise in the consumer market. And it's a lot more durable and usable. So I hope you enjoyed this video on how to replace the fan in a GS724T from Netgear. This is going to go in our next rack rehab video, and this will become the new switch for my house. Thanks for watching. Hey, thanks for sticking around to the end of my video. If you liked what you saw here, do me a solid, hit the like button down below. If you really want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button. And if you want YouTube to actually let you know they're there, hit the bell. Thanks again, and check out links to these other videos you might like.